Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Street Fighter V Rainbow Mika, aka R Mika. And it's just really nice to finally get a figure of the Street Fighter known for having the biggest set of ponytails. It's just, it's a nice thing to see. We haven't had a good figure of this character in a very, very long time, if ever. The uh, Soda one was okay. But that's about it, so it's nice to see this one. And she's just really got some really nice, big accessories that we can look at as we get into the review. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This figure stands just about six, eh, about six and an eighth inches tall, which makes it just about, eh, about 15 and a half centimeters, pretty close to that. And you'll see it's done very well overall. Uh, the skin tone's a little questionable. It's not quite as pink as it probably should be. It's a little bit more on the yellow side, but it's not terrible. It definitely could look better, but it's, it's okay. Uh, the paintwork on it is fairly clean throughout. You can see most of the line work. Really no issues. The the blue up against the skin, there's only an instance of bleeding here or there. Uh, again, with the white, it's pretty much the same thing. It looks very nice. And as far as sculpt work goes, the clothing looks really good. The, the anatomy looks overall okay. And, and two things that stand out as far as the sculpt goes, they're done very, very well. It's the boots. They look really good. The, the stitching, and then there's like wrinkling going on down the sides of the stitching. Or not the stitching, the laces. <laughs> it's kind of like stitching, I guess. Uh, it's just done very, very nicely. It looks really, really good. And then all of this is like sculpted in because her clothes are so tight. They're like the same plane as her skin. They're actually sunken in because it's squishing her, her legs. But it's done pretty well. It looks pretty nice. So I'm happy about that. And then the paintwork for the hair, there's a little bit of shading in there. It's, it's okay. It's not quite as uniform as I'd like on the top of the head, but it's all right. It's definitely good enough. As far as accessories go, we have three different faces. We have the neutral face that comes on her in the package. One face where she's smiling and looking off to the side. And then one where I guess she's yelling perhaps or talking into her microphone which she does come with she has a microphone and then a hand to hold the microphone she has two fist hands that come on her in the package two pointing finger hands two kind of grappling like hands and then two almost like style pose hands uh, we do have two like energy effect pieces that would just go on the ground for her to do like a suplex or a slam or something like that and then we have these terrible cardboard pieces which I'm going to talk about just for a second I don't dislike the idea of these at all. In fact, when they started doing them, it was pretty good. But now what they're doing is they're not fitting them in the package properly. Look at how warped they are. They're not even close to square. Like, these are worthless. They won't stand up, and they're going to look like crap. They're just terrible. So what's the point of including this if you're not going to do it right? This is just absolute waste. This is garbage. This is scrub-tier manufacturing and quality control and designing. This is not good. This is... Very irritating to pay decent money for these figures, and then, oh, they come with a cardboard accessory that looks like it's been rained on. That's it's not okay. Alright, as far as this figure goes, it does a lot of things really well articulation-wise. A couple of things not so great, but mostly it's done really, really well. The hair can move around, of course. Um, there's not too much play. I think it's technically a ball peg, but it pretty much just lets him swivel around. It, it might just be a, a regular swivel. I can't quite tell because they don't come out. Uh, as far as the head goes, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible design. So I'll zoom in so you can see this up nice and close. There's a hinge in here, which is standard, and then of course that can rotate around, except it really can't. So the neck has to do all the rotation, which isn't the biggest deal, but it is a deal. And so you have the hinge, which is the only functional part of this articulation. You can see it goes up and then back, and that's how it pegs in, but there's no room for it to move. There's no play in that peg. So literally all you have out of all of this, functionally speaking, is just the hinge, which is only minimally usable because the head has to go on. So it only moves a little bit, which I mean, obviously that's fine, but then all of the rest of the articulation comes out of the neck, which has almost no range. You just have to rotate it pretty much. So it's very limited for no reason. All they needed was a double ball peg, and at least you could have leaned the head side to side and rotated on the neck. And it's cheaper. I don't know why they don't do that. That's definitely not an okay design. Uh, the next thing we have is the shoulders, which is another thing that's it's not a great design. We have a butterfly joint in here, which works a little bit. You can see it has very minimal range, so it doesn't really help anything. And it's you see how far back it is inside the socket? The farther in a, a butterfly joint is, the less effective it is. And that's why this one is completely non-effective. Like, the boobs are obviously very big on this figure, big boobages. And tiny butterfly joint means useless butterfly joint. Not good at all. It, it can move up and down a little bit in there, but that doesn't 
I mean, it's almost no range, and it just doesn't really function. You have this ball peg that connects the arm to the butterfly joint, which does give it really good range. Of course, you have your ball hinge and then peg down into the bicep swivel. That's where you get your bicep swivel. There isn't one on the outside, so that's okay. It's definitely not ideal for that kind of bicep swivel, but it'll work. Uh, and then as far as the hinge goes, you get decent range out of it, but it's a really long ball peg. And it does look ugly in a lot of poses, and they could have easily avoided that, given it a shorter ball peg, uh, and then a functional butterfly joint would have been wonderful on this, and it would have been better functionally, and it would have been better aesthetically. As it is, there are poses you can do that look fine, but there are poses that you can do that makes it look like a Revoltech figure, and it has a lot of peggage, and you don't want that. Now, this isn't an example of that. I mean, obviously, you're going to see some guts in there, but you don't need to see as much of that, and I think they could have easily avoided that with a little bit of effort. Double jointed elbow works pretty nicely. It's not the best design in the world, but it it's okay. It's good enough. The uh, color variation kind of hides a lot of that because your eye is drawn away from it, so that's pretty good. For the wrists, you have your tiny little ball hinge. And the hands are pretty soft material, so you don't have to worry about that breaking. Or at least, you shouldn't worry too much about it. It's always a, a slight risk, but you have decent range out of that too, so that's pretty good. Now the diaphragm joint is something they did really, really, really well. Um, it's just it's just really fantastic. I think it's a single ball peg, and that just goes to show how effective that can be. She can lean side to side, no problem at all, all the way forward. Like her boobages can almost touch her waist, which, of course, that that there's two issues there, but we, we won't get into that. So she can lean all the way back, all the way forward, side to side, full rotation, no problem at all. Very very well done. We have the same type of ab crunch as Cami, which was not effective on Cami. Is it effective on this figure? Let's see, it doesn't go forward at all, it goes back a little bit. So going back is nice, I mean that's that's definitely a nice bonus. And it doesn't look too bad here, it's pretty well hidden again by the color variation. But it's just, it doesn't really need to be there, and because of the way they did that, it does limit what they can do underneath here for the hips, and that is another issue we have. Luckily this diaphragm joint up here just works so nicely, you can pretty much do whatever you want. So the legs can go pretty much all the way out to the side, and that's a really, really good thing because she needs to be able to do those kind of flexible type poses. It doesn't look too bad all the way around. It's it's pretty well done. I mean, as far as splits go, this is about as good as it gets for an action figure or sidekicks. You know, somebody asked me one time, why do you always say the figures can't do splits? Well, it's not that I want them to do splits, dude. It's that it's the same pose for kicks and all kinds of other things. So that's what I'm talking about. It just happens to be the splits. It's like, why would you put why would you put Batman in the splits? Because I like putting Batman in the splits, obviously. As far as the legs going forward, though, this is where we come into an issue. They really can't go forward at all. They can go back pretty well. They get a little gapping, but they don't go forward very well. They have to go out to the side if you want them to go forward, which is a little bit of a bummer. Of course, it's still fine. You'll be able to put her in her some of her more iconic poses, but... Um, it's so hard for me to not just make constant jokes with this figure. Uh, but yeah, it, it works well enough. It, it's okay. I think if this was a floating piece, it probably would have afforded a little bit more range forward and back, or at least forward for the hips, but I think it's still okay. Uh, it's, it's good enough. For the knees, we have a double-jointed knee, which is done pretty well. You can see they put that cap in there, which is like I've been saying they should do for like all of the Dragon Ball figures. It's not executed particularly well, but it's well enough, so that's pretty good decent range and then for these ankles they're just about wonderful they're just about perfect they go pretty much all the way forward all the way back and you can rotate that around to give yourself a, a proper ankle rocker really really nicely done and you have a toe hinge in the proper placement on the foot and it's functional so ultimately this figure is really good we do have a really bad neck joint some questionable issues with the shoulder this tiny bit of an issue with the hips and uh, lower ab crunch but ultimately, it's really, really well done, and she just has giant. Anyway, it's a good figure, guys. It's definitely better than, uh, I'd say it's better than Cami. I think they did a better job than Cami, and it's probably up there with Chun-Li. And then here's a comparison with Ryu, just so you have a size comparison, and I'll have a photo at the end, of course, too. But yeah, I recommend it, guys. I think you'll like it. It's a pretty solid figure, and like I said, some of the engineering is pretty impressive. So and there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have new videos up every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff so make sure you come back for that give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and in the meantime keep collecting